Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be concentrating radioactive materials out of thin air using everyday household party balloons. Let's first begin by measuring the radiation on the balloons. So we get our starting values. We're on times one setting, and we can just set the balloons on top. They're nowhere near anything special. They're just better on background, which is normal. We're gonna be using the green as control. Set that off aside. Blue as test one, and pink as test two. Let's turn off the Geiger counter and get everything set up. We're gonna begin by blowing them up. It doesn't matter how you blow them up, you can just use regular breath. The next very important step is to generate static electricity on them. This can go on so many different ways. You can just rub it on your hair, the easiest, or go after a poor defenseless animal and use their fur. You can see that this one has been static electricity and the hair stuck to it. And when I move it towards this one, the other one's repelled. Now that we've got our first balloon all static electricity, we can attach it to a holding method. It doesn't matter what you use. I'm just using a lab stand because it's easy and some wire. Now let's do the second one. Let's move the pink one over to its testing location and leave the blue one here. The pink's testing location is a random spot on the floor. We'll be back in 30 minutes to check on it. Here we have a container of uranium ore. We'll be opening this up next to the balloon. and letting it sit for 30 minutes, and we'll be back to check up on this one. For the magic of editing, it'll be 30 minutes later by the time you see this. It's been 30 minutes, let's close this up and retrieve the pink balloon. Let's begin with the blue one that down. Next step is to deflate it without exploding it. So we'll just be cutting a little nick in it. Well, that could have went better. We still have all the pieces, so it's fine. Let's set that off to the side. Get rid of the stand as we don't need it. And next to the pink one. We have all three of our balloons back united. Let's first check the control. Make sure there's no radiation on that. And it's regular background. Next, we'll check the pink.
and we see it tops out at just slightly under 2,000 counts per minute. Let's set that off to the side and get the blue one on here. and we see it tops out at around 1,000 counts per minute. Now, why did these balloons become radioactive? Now, to understand why these balloons became radioactive, we have to go into the fact that what we did to them, we made them charged. Now, by doing that, we rubbed in our head, creating static electricity. You saw when I took the other balloon and I put it near the other one, how it repelled, so it gave it a charge. We also have to understand that there's constantly radioactive materials around us. The reason why basements are most common that have radioactive materials on it is because of the concrete. Because within the concrete is uranium and thorium, two very common naturally occurring minerals that are found in sand and in the rocks that make up the concrete. Now this uranium and thorium decay until it reaches radium. Now radium, as you know, is used in clocks and is very, very radioactive. This very radioactive radium decays using an alpha particle, which is a helium without electrons. So that takes away two protons and two electrons, keeping it neutrally charged still, which that decays into radon. Radon is a common problem for basements due to the problem discussed before. The concrete contains radioactive materials. This radon then alpha decays into polonium, 212, and that polonium lasts, has a half-life of about three minutes, then that decays into lead 210. Now, this is where the important stuff starts happening. That lead 214 decays using a beta. Now, this beta is just an electron. This electron goes shooting off. This means that there's more protons than electrons there, giving the radioactive material charge. Now there's three major ones, the progenies of radon. These three major ones are lead-210, bismuth-210, and polonium. Now lead's the longest lasting one, then bismuth, and then polonium. Now what's happening is because there's a charge, these particles are heading to the balloons. Now this is very common for dust particles to happen to the same thing. It's also common for clothing to pick up a static charge and radon to go to it. If you ever visit a nuclear reactor, they have very sensitive meters where if you store your clothes in a basement or con near concrete, they'll pick up radon naturally and hold on to it due to what's discussed before, its progenies become charged. Now radon by itself isn't charged, as discussed before, as it's a neutral atom, equal number of protons, equal numbers of electrons. Now this is also a common problem because it bonds to the dust, as stated before. And because it bonds to the dust, you can breathe that dust in and then get radioactive materials in your lungs. That's why houses are routinely tested for radon, especially older houses, as the radon builds up over time. And in basements especially, because there's not a lot of air movement. In the upstairs of the house, you tend to get more air movement, which moves the radon around. That's why this experiment is best performed in an area with low air drafts and low movement. Now, radioactive material wants to reach a state of stableness. Now, in the case of uranium, it'll always decay into either mercury or lead, two very dense elements. This is through beta, alpha, and gamma, as stated before. Now this is a really cool experiment because we're able to take the air itself and concentrate it down and collect all the radioactive materials and show that there's radiation always around us. It's not some just theoretical thing just for nuclear reactors, some big scary thing. There's constantly radiation going through us.
I'm gonna have to keep these balloons because I did irradiate them using natural components, but it's good practice to keep your radioactive materials. They won't last long as the decay cycle for everything is just a few days, and the most abundant one here is the lead, and that won't take so long to decay. Now what I was hoping with the blue one, because I put it next to the uranium ore, was I could get a more concentrated dose. But due to the fact that the balloon pretty much just exploded, I believe I lost a bunch of it. In my previous test, when I was doing this off-camera, of course, I was able to poke a little pring hole and the air to just slowly release. And in those cases, I had much more active samples. Now another cool thing, because the radioactive decay is so quick in these, is if you put your meter next to them, you can do calculate the half-life yourself through the radiation decay and see there's a curve there for each element. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about today's topic, please post in the comment section below. If you want a place to talk science, please consider joining my Discord server. There are many like-minded individuals there. As always, I look forward to seeing you again, and if you like my content, please consider subscribing. It means a lot to me, and see you later. Well, I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. So, my cad, I bought me a Jeep. I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever.